Hello and welcome back. So today we are going to be talking about the Hario Mugen uh, Dripper. This is the plastic version. There's also a ceramic version available. However, we only stock the plastic version. Um, so yeah, I want to do a bit of an unboxing, um, talk about what's included. And towards the end, we'll get to brewing up a coffee and showing you um, the intended uh, brew method for this particular dripper. All right, so let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, this is the box. It is probably one of the nicer looking Pario boxes. Um, they tend to be a little bit, I don't know, a bit boring. <laughs> um, but the, yeah, but as you can see, loving the design. Um, and they've got some great photos on there. It's uh, well thought out. With most of the Hario products, it has some descriptions about the box um, and a little bit more about the dripper. Now, one thing about this particular dripper compared to um, the other V60 drippers is that it doesn't include a scoop. This is probably the first dripper from Hario that I've um, opened up and and it doesn't have a scoop, so there you go. We've got a little instruction booklet. Um, now, Hario actually recommend a single pour brew method with this dripper, and we're gonna go ahead and do it. And we've got the dripper itself. Now, um, there's two parts to the dripper. We've got the base and the actual um, dripper itself, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a sec. Besides that, it's literally just the dripper, and the manual. That's all that's included in the box. So, um, as you can see, and we touched on this a little bit before, but there's two parts to it. You've got the dripper itself, um, and then you've also got this base. Now, this base is a little bit different from the um, traditional V60 bases. It, it looks a little bit different, and I'm not entirely sure why they went with this design. Um, however, it is easy to use and it's also easy to come apart. So you just kind of put your finger here and kind of pry it apart a little bit. You can... Whoa. And there you go. So it just kind of pops out like that and um, you can clean it uh, easily and then you can also easily pop it back in. Um, just like that, sweet. Um, also, once you've finished brewing, uh, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to remove the filter. So what you wanna do is you wanna actually brew with it as you would, pop it to the side, forget about it, and then once it's cool enough to touch, flip it upside down, and then with your finger, just poke the little filter uh, the base out. And then you can also grab the paper and pry it out that way. Um, so yeah, but and the reason for this is because if you're using a paper filter, it really does like to stick to the sides and it can get a little bit tricky, which is great for contact time. Um, not so great for trying to remove it once you finish brewing. Speaking of brewing, let's get into it. So um, the dripper is the O2 size. So you're going to need the either any conical filter, which is the O2 size or fits one to four cups. Um, the first thing we're going to do is just like any other filter, we're going to fold our little mountain edge over, making sure just to fold this tip a little bit longer. Um, and that way you can get a much better seal. Hopefully we'll find out. Let's um, pop the dry filter into our Mugen and weigh out some beans and we'll be back. Okay, so I've just ground 20 grams of coffee and I've done that at 25 clicks. It's time to set our filter. So what I've done is I've just placed it in like so and with my hot water, I'm going to start from the very center. I'm going to follow this um, fold and then I'm going to work my way out, trying to keep it high and just 
the water will fall down and set my filter. So let's go. Let's try to. Look at that. Perfect. Nearly perfect. So close. So as you can see, where it's black is where the filter is uh, completely sealed with the dripper. Where it's white, it's either raised or for in this instance, you just can't see it because of that fold. Um, so over here, we've got this massive little air bubble. So you can go in there and adjust it. I'm not going to, um, I don't think it affects the uh, brew too much, um, but it is something to think about. All right, tear out your scales. We've got um, 20 grams at 25 clicks. Pop that in. Perfect. The aim for this now is to use 240 grams of water uh, to 20 grams of our coffee. And we're going to only do one pour and that's including the blooming stage. So um, as you can tell already, just from what I've told you, it will rely a little bit more on technique. Um, but yeah, let's go for it. Tear out. We've got our water at 96. We've teared our scale. We are going to start slowly in the center, introducing that water. I've got my kettle full, um, so it makes it a little bit easier for the Stag EKG to pour a little bit quicker. And we are just gonna go into circles. Now it doesn't matter too much if you do hit the um, walls really quick whoops and a little bit over 250 so it doesn't matter too much if you do hit the walls as it does have that full seal um, and that also makes this dripper I'm just going to give it a quick spin that does make this dripper a lot easier to um, brew with if you don't have a gooseneck spout. Now at this stage what you can do is you can stir real quick. Um, if you haven't already definitely check out Tails Coffee. They probably have a lot more experience using this technique than I do. Um, but yeah it is a relatively quick brew um, provided that you do it this way. So I think that this stripper in particular um, offers a lot of different stuff to a lot of different people and I think that if you're coming from a travel sort of out of the house and you don't have access to something like the gooseneck kettle and um, you know you find yourself always hitting the edges and creating a lot of turbulence or whatnot this would be a great dripper to introduce you to uh, pour over coffee um, if you you can also use so so in this uh, demonstration, we've done a single pour brew, but you can actually use this dripper just exactly as you would a traditional V60. So whether that's a three-stage brew or a five-stage brew, um, you can still use it that same way. So you don't have to use it the way that uh, Hario has intended um, with that one pour brew method. Um, there is There are other ways that you can use this dripper. Um, so yeah. All right, so guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm going to dig into this coffee. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions about this dripper or any other products on our website, um, feel free to leave a comment and we'll get back to you. Have a good one.